This is Barry Zalma speaking for Claim School Incorporated's newsletter, Zalma's Insurance Fraud Letter for August 1, 2024. This volume 28, issue 15 of Zalma's Insurance Fraud Letter provides the source for the insurance fraud professional. It continues into its 28th year in, of publication dedicated to those involved in reducing the effect of insurance fraud. Ziffel is published 24 times a year by Claim School and is written by me. It is provided free to anyone who visits the site at the location in the blog posting, and this issue contains some of the following articles about insurance and insurance fraud. The first article is an article about a person found guilty of workers' compensation fraud who inflated his on-the-job injury and was convicted of fraud. A jury found that Waliula Nazari was guilty of two counts of making false and fraudulent statements for the purpose of obtaining workers' compensation benefits and seven counts of attempted perjury under oath. In a case entitled The People v. Waliula Nazari, the California Court of Appeals on July 18, 2024, affirmed his conviction because surveillance established that he lied. You can read the full issue of Ziffel and the full article at the link provided in the blog. Next is an article on what is insurance fraud. Something simple and as a reminder to all fraud investigators, insurance fraud is the most popular and perpetrated crime in the world next to perhaps tax fraud. The poss possibility of a tax-free profit coupled with the commonly held belief that probably supported by actual arrest and conviction records that criminal prosecution will not occur is sometimes too difficult for normally honest people to resist. Each year, the effect of insurance fraud runs to billions of dollars. It's estimated that insurance fraud takes between $333 billion to $308 billion a year in premiums collected and annually drains as much as $308 billion or more from the assets of insurers in the United States. Insurance fraud occurs when a person or entity makes false insurance claims in order to obtain compensation or benefits to which they are not entitled. Insurance fraud is committed in many forms, but regardless of the type, it is considered a serious crime in all jurisdictions, although they don't work too hard to convict the fraud perpetrators. The various types of insurance fraud are listed in the article that you can obtain by clicking on the link provided in the blog. Then we have more on McClenny Mosley and Associates issues. With uh, this 33rd installment of the saga of MMA and its problems with federal courts in the state of Louisiana, and what appears to be an effort to profit from what some magistrate and district judges indicate may be criminal conduct, to profit from insurance claims relating to hurricane damage to the public of the state of Louisiana. On July 9, 2024, the law firm Morris Bart filed a complaint for injunctive relief and for declaratory judgment against MME in the Eastern District of Louisiana years ago, and that suit failed, and now they are filing the same request for indemnity in the bankruptcy court that... Uh, that has handled MMA's 
bankruptcy. Next is an article listing health insurance fraud convictions, starting with a great number where the Department of Justice was assisted by whistleblowers who filed key TAM suits to stop fraud and, the, and join in whatever monies the government collected. The first article deals with a $2.45 million health care fraud settlement where Vista Clinical Diagnostics LLC allegedly submitted or caused the submission of false claims to Medicare and Medicaid programs in North Carolina, Virginia, and Florida. The settlement funds will be returned to the Medicare and Medicaid programs. Vista Clinical Diagnostics, LLC, from January 1, 2017 through December 31, 2021, allegedly submitted or caused to be submitted reimbursement claims to Medicare and Medicaid by adding diagnostic codes into patients' reimbursement submissions that had not been provided by those patients or their physicians. You can read the full issue of Zivil and the full article including dozens of settlements and convictions for health insurance fraud in this month, this issue of Zivil at the link provided. Then there's an article on the reasons for the examination under oath. Recognizing that the EUO is not an adversary proceeding like a deposition in a lawsuit, but is an essential part of any potential fraud investigation. The examination under oath is an investigative tool made available to the insurer by the contract of insurance. It allows the insurer to delve deeply and under oath into all aspects of the policy and the loss. The testimony to be elicited is not constrained by rules of discovery or the codes of civil procedure. The only restraint on the EUO is reasonableness, although some courts do not even include a reasonableness standard. Regardless, the person taking the EUO must always act reasonably while understanding that unlimited questions are allowed. Only irrelevant and unreasonable questions dealing with facts completely outside the policy, its acquisition, and or the loss are not favored. You can read the full article in the link provided as well as the entire Salman's Insurance fraud letter at that link. Thank you for your attention.